your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your, your mom, mom and dad. dad. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Hello, Did you family. all set your intentions for the eclipse? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, yes, you know I did, King. Because if you didn't, none of your dreams will come true. I slept through the eclipse, so <laughs> I slept- ruined. <laughs> so I got extra good what rest. What are the intentions when you sleep through? I dreamt through the eclipse, and there's that, honeybee. What does that mean? Yeah, I was driving, and I was like, oh, it's like eclipse time, isn't it? I remember like trying to look, and I'm like, I don't notice any difference. Yeah, I don't. In Los Angeles, apparently, we got like something like a half percent coverage Partial, so there was yeah. like a proper there was a proper moment where i heard people talking later you're, you're shouting in the streets oh my god <laughs> <laughs> no i heard people talking later like oh yeah like it went dark for a second mm-hmm. but i looked up at a certain time that i was like oh what time should i go outside and check it out i am like you guys i <laughs> I was just telling the guys I'm so embarrassed because I cannot believe I forgot like the duh that you can't look at the eclipse during the eclipse. It's like that insanely embarrassing Donald Trump meme where he stared into the (laughs) eclipse and like I loved it because everyone was just clowning on him for forever about it. I did that. Like luckily it wasn't during the eclipse, but I set my my alarm and I went outside and I just suddenly just looked up and stared burning retinas into the sun right, and i'm like right. why did i do that and i couldn't like it was all splotchy for like 30 minutes <laughs> and then yeah, i never all, saw the eclipse and i was like why would i like i'm yeah. like everyone is talking about the one thing everyone says is don't look at the eclipse and i just walk outside and I just look right into the sun but i think it's big eclipse it's marketing what are no you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Is, it's, no. We're talking big eclipse. No, everyone, this big is eclipse. my surgeon. Do not listen to him. Do not look at the Hear eclipse. Me out. It Hear will me burn who your sells retinas. all these glasses? It will know. burn your retinas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's big eclipse. Okay. It's trying to sell the glasses. <laughs> no, hear me out. Big eclipse is trying to convince us that you shouldn't look at it. Yeah. Huh. Now, what is human nature 101? Oh, the shiniest, Don't touch brightest that. thing, though. You look I want to touch it. <laughs> yeah. So Big Eclipse comes out with the marketing. Don't look at the eclipse. Then everyone's free. I got to see the eclipse today. It's all marketing. No, it's all intergalactic don't. marketing. <laughs> People don't realize that the intergalactic, you know, marketing team truly had us on this one. They're selling like leads. They're selling glasses. You know, it's all Big Eclipse. They're saying don't look at the eclipse without glasses. So exactly. you get the glasses. So okay. don't look at the eclipse. Now I want to look at the eclipse, but if you do look at it, get the glasses. I mean, it's all Y'all, part of the thing. Please do not you know listen I mean? to Evan Ambrose. Also, is MD looking at the sun. mind doctor because <laughs> that your your eyes will your retinas will fry. Please do not. Also, do this. is is kind of looking at the sun kind of like don't you gum it'll grow a tree in your stomach? You know what I mean? Like, is there a level where it hurts? But okay, like, how bad all, is it? You I want to I mean? say to you, don't you gum it'll grow a tree in your stomach is bananas. Like, no one's ever said that. I'm gonna be trying to like, just like a way, No, it's a way to tell kids not to swallow gum. I know, but isn't it like it gets stuck in your stomach for seven years? They say don't like eat seeds; it'll grow a tree in your stomach. Don't you? Maybe gum, I combine two. Maybe I combine two stories. Maybe it didn't. Same. I'm like a gum tree. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I'm just saying. Listen, everyone, you know what I mean? it's because Evan, God bless your soul. You okay, so here's the thing, family. We appreciate you being so flexible and patient. Yes. I know this normally drops on Wednesday mm-hmm. and it's dropping on a Thursday. It's because the schedule. <laughs> because it's been a little schedule. crazy for me. When I say this, that your father over here, I think probably for the past three weeks, has gotten, I'm guessing, two hours of sleep per night. It feels like that. And it's finally really caught up with you yeah. where I'm catching you like the moments I see you staring. <laughs> into the sun and yeah. off, into the distance. <laughs> Gotta recharge the batteries. Yeah, I, I, I have. You're a, so I have a tired. This is, I survived staring at the eclipse. You, like, you, <laughs> you're so tired. You're talking about big eclipse. Like that's what level of del- business of big delusion. That's what level of delusion we're on right now. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's like we said. You've been. It's yeah. 
Evan's a, a, a music director, and yeah. it's Coachella week. It's this Coachella week. season, so, so we've got a lot of things been, going on. You've you've had an absolutely wild, wild a schedule. bit of a bender. Yeah, bit of a bender. So, yeah, so we had yeah. to recalibrate and record this morning. But thank you so much for being able to record. Oh I God. I had said like, hey babe, you're welcome. Thanks I, for having me today. I'm like, I, I can get somebody else to come in and guess, and, and you said, were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no one sits in my chair. <laughs> no, but, no, no. It was just like you know. But we appreciate. We never you. do this too. That I don't think it's like we, we very rarely ever push, but had to do yeah, it. Thanks. There's a sickness. Thanks yeah. for your flexibility. Thanks for your love. Thanks for still being a part of it. You know, this is part really. Of, this is family. We we flex for each other. So it's really family. It's really it means family. a lot. And we appreciate you being here. Oh, we I appreciate being here and being loved. And guess what? Speaking of love, what yes. we're going to do today. Yeah. So before we officially next week dive into the reality TV, speaking of benders yeah. of it all, <laughs> um, which we will discuss in a few minutes here, what we will be doing. Yeah. Um, before we dive into that, last Friday, last Friday, yes, we put out an episode where you all via our anniversary asked us questions yeah. about our relationship sent in voice ma uh, voicemails and everything mm -hmm. and we loved having the conversation it was so fun. and there were so many questions and you know we got to a few i want to say this the family i just i love you all so much i think i received after that episode more like emails dms mm -hmm. than i have and i don't know how long People saying like, this is what I'm feeling. This yeah. is my story. This is what I've experienced in a relationship, what I'm struggling with. And just like oh, so much vulnerability and openness. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel like it re like regenerated and rejuvenated me over the past couple of days being like, we're all not a, like we're not alone. We're mm. all in this together. We've all had such different experiences, even w whether you've been in a romantic relationship or not. So much of this applies to friendships, to all sorts of different relationships. And it's like. I don't know. I just felt so seen and yeah. familial and it made me feel warm and just like a big hug. And so thank you all so much for sending in all those uh, those DMs and, and all the comments and everything. Yeah. But it made us go, you know what? We feel like the family connected and we connected. Yeah. So we wanted to do an, one more episode like mm -hmm. this where we get into some you know intense relationship topics yes. because we still like i said had a lot and there were a few notable topics that were still getting Trends. brought up a lot yeah. and we want to talk about those and some of yes. them are a little spicy yes. so um yeah we're gonna do that 100 percent. percent. we're gonna it. do that today mm -hmm. um before we do that let's take a quick pause and then also we gotta talk what our schedule coming yes. up is because okay, you all voted you all oh my god the family they, they gave us the comments up, and they out. showed up and they showed out and they blessed my scheduling heart mm. so thank you all so much <laughs> thank so you guys much. first of all thank you for taking care of that because um if you guys didn't i would have had to have and that's we all know that was the gift. my strength <laughs> that was the gift you gave to your father yes. who's been very busy is that yes, you helped the me gift was that you helped you helped me schedule. schedule and i appreciate all of you so much so much i feel seen i feel loved i feel taken care of i feel appreciated wow yeah we all just, there's so much love going on right now yeah the eclipse is really pulsating through my veins mm. um all right family so some people just celebrated Easter. We just celebrated our anniversary, obviously. Oh. We're going to be getting into this more. Uh, and to those who celebrate 420, it is right around the corner. And if you celebrate, then let me tell you about Via. With Via, you can celebrate the right way. Via's hemp products truly offer it all. Whatever you're feeling, need to chill out after a long day, babe? There's a, a Via gummy for that. Mm. Dealing with stress, babe? <laughs> there's, a Via, there's a Via gummy for that. Want to set a certain mood in the bedroom? Babe, babe? <laughs> there's a gummy for that. <laughs> Vaya has actually developed a unique blend of pleasure enhancing cannabinoids, libido strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind blowing gummy called High Love. And like I have mentioned, Evan and I have tried High Love before, and we'll keep it short and sweet by saying we enjoyed it. It was enjoyable. We absolutely enjoyed yeah. it. So if you're interested and if you are 21 plus, if you're 21 over, check out the link to Via in our description and use code MOMDAD to get 15% off. Yeah, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies with and without THC, each with their own unique uh, strengths and effects catered for your routines. Whether you're looking for better sleep, relief, or a nice buzz, Via has some 
something for you. I love their gummies before bed. Yeah, I that get, dreams I get one. incredible sleep. And the yeah. best part, via legally ships in all 50 states. No medical card required. And by the way, if THC isn't for you, you can still take advantage of their CBD line with products designed for sleep, focus, and energy. I love, love, love. I love their zero THC products. I love Flow State while I'm working and Zen before bedtime. They're so good. So if you're 21 plus, again, 21 and over, check out the link to Via in our description and use the code MOMDAD to receive 15% off. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. Celebrate 420 the right way with Via. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So let's talk. Wait, we're going to talk our schedule in reality oh, yeah. TV, but I do, I want to bring something up and I want Lee, your opinion on this because I've been lecturing Evan about this oh, yeah. for the few hours I've seen him over the last couple of days. Yeah. This has been, yeah. It's like, Hey babe, how are you? It's like Qu- quick, shut up. I have an idea. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> and I need Lee your opinion and I need the family. Family, please go off, blow up those YouTube comments because I need validation in this, okay? okay. Please tell me this is an amazing idea or tell me that this is a terrible idea. Um, but amazing idea, preferred. Um, okay, so I was thought about this because the other day I saw Doughton, our sweet charity and Doughton, the couple that we love mm-hmm. and we worship, um, he posted um like a slideshow on his instagram and one of the slides had charity singing along during a concert and her voice was really good and i'm like first of all of course charity our queen the woman just danced like an absolute pro in dancing with the stars she also has an incredible voice she's an amazing person she can't get better um but it made me think because i'm like oh charity dancing with the stars why do we have a dancing with the stars and we don't have a singing with the stars that's crazy. Like, why don't we have that? Okay. Like, I know there's the masked singer. Yeah. But that is like, they're able to cover themselves up. Right. right and slip right. into secrecy. So we don't have to like make eye contact with them. So if they do fumble, they're in like a monster costume. Yeah. And, and I haven't seen guessing. the show, but I absolutely hate the premise. <laughs> <gonna> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it, there must be something to it, but I've it's never seen cute. it. The show's huge. It's huge. So you, I, mean, I bet there's a lot of people like watching right now going, Evan, you have haven't seen it you don't get it but like the premise is something of my nightmares but Being like let's put celebrities in weird costumes have them sing and then they got a guess i'm just like what no, is this? y'all it's absolutely i insane. prefer your idea much more but the, but i have to say with the um with the masked singer one of my most favorite every once in a while i'll like watch little clips yeah. of it and my most favorite thing is every single season they always all the judges who are also celebrities are guessing who is the celebrity in the costume and they're always guessing like Brad Pitt yeah right George Clooney right. I'm like you guys cuss stop like we all know that it's like a CD list yeah no it's that <laughs> one actor who was kind of in that movie everybody's like hey, everyone's well they get a bigger name but yeah. like but we're not talking we're we're not doing a-listers. Timothy, it's like, it's probably Timothy like Chalamet isn't in, you know, yeah, yeah. a jellyfish costume. Right, exactly. <laughs> like yeah, exactly. You know, whatever. But yeah, it's like a, it's an athlete or something, you know, yeah. whatever. But um, but my, yeah, my idea is like singing with the stars where you're, you know, seeing them backstage practicing and there there's a lot of people who, you know, they think they're good, but they're not very good. I mean, tell me this wouldn't be the most cringeworthy <sighs> Because dancing yeah. with the stars, a lot of times, yeah, you have sometimes the people who can't dance very well, yeah. and then you have a moment of like, oh, that was a little, that was sure, intense. Sure. But think about singing. But they also have a partner, right? Exactly. Who's incredible. Who can basically can carry like, them. Go, okay, this person's not very good, so we can design this whole thing. Think about, think about them looking directly right. into Just the camera like, and ah! singing. Yeah. Like Mike the Situation singing Ice oh. Ice Baby, like all by myself. Oh, Mike the Situation singing all by myself. <laughs> I need it. Come on. You know what I mean? Nick, and then every once Nick, in a while. Uh, <laughs> singing without me. The amount of videos that I've seen where like there's like there's like split screens of a guy like tied up and he's like singing that to them. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> and then it just cuts back to Nick going, Think you can live. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Lachey like, was- he, like he, he 
got someone, tied them up in the basement, and then it's just like <laughs> singing it to them because no one else will listen. Oh, it's uh, so funny. <laughs> and the guy's like, <laughs> 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 No, listen, Nicholas J would try to audition or get on. <laughs> They're like, No, singing. you're not. You can't be an actual singer. <laughs> That's the say. point of this. He'd be like, I, You guys get my agents. I'm getting on singing with the stars. They're like, Nick. A literal guy from a band, a musician, yeah. a singer cannot audition for singing with the stars. Right, right. But he'd figure out how to get on and he would rip his Halsey music. Just every week a different Halsey song. Halsey would be like sending season. And then and Halsey desist. comes out as a judge and he's like, Oh my god. <laughs> But I don't know. I just yeah. think it would be so iconic. I yeah. just I, I can't believe it doesn't exist. Right. You know? I, I feel yeah. like maybe not enough. Celebs are down mm. to get up, on, get out on a stage, <laughs> right, right. a la American Idol, and like let it rip every yeah. week. Like think about how many people. Yeah, I just, think that. Oh man, it's really un, like a, like a bad voice is very unsavory. <laughs> not dancing that good is like not that big of a deal. It's like, yeah. oh, what did you expect? They're not a dancer, sure. so it's more of a surprise at how good. But listening to a horrible voice is like a form of, it's like brutal. You know what I mean? Like it sucks, and so. I, th- I, mean, I wonder if they've tested this type of thing and they're like, people are like, oh, <laughs> people are terrific. Just, they don't like it. But then every once in a while, you get uh, every a, once a, a while, shock and awe and you'd be like, oh, that person. Because think about how many celebrities have spent their life, you know, on the stage beforehand. I doing bet a musical lot of them theaters. can sing solid. That's what I'm saying. So then all of a sudden you'd have like a moment where someone, you know, again, like a charity, one of your favorite reality TV stars, she would get up on that stage and she would crush and everyone would have tears in our eyes. We'd be like, this is everything to us. Right. So then you'd have the highs and the you'd lows have the of the highs show. highs and the lows, the cringe, a lot of cringe. Yeah. I don't know. I everybody. like the idea. I mean, I think it's definitely as viable and interesting as like Dancing with the Stars and uh the masked singer and stuff like that yeah. you know what i mean i'm just saying call me abc nbc CBS, another free idea from your mom and dad tmz e bravo amc you can call you can all call me okay, anywho so <laughs> that has something to do with it but i've just been really just, passionate about it the past yeah, couple days it's important that we share our passions thank you so yeah, much i appreciate you validating you. thank you thank yeah. you so much um okay but to our schedule to the reality tv of it all family we have, I mentioned it on our Instagram, but if you haven't seen, via support from all of you and our own excitement, we 100%, we are covering the circle. Yes. It is starting next week. Um, our first circle recap will be out next Friday yeah. because the first four episodes of the circle drop next Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and then here's the deal. We're going to be covering the circle every week until it's done. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be our consistent <clears throat> yeah. one. So... The next few weeks, obviously we have two episodes every other week, but when we have the one episode a week, it will be on Fridays because of the circle dropping episodes on Wednesdays Wednesdays for the next couple weeks. So every week we will be covering the circle. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm pumped. I saw an article about a new feature that they're adding and I don't want to share it because I feel like people might consider it like ruining a surprise mm. but I saw an article about it like a public article oh yeah um, about an element that they're adding and when I tell you all this is going to be groundbreaking it's definitely like first of its kind bananas wild like we're all going to be talking <laughs> mm-hmm. about it I'm like sh- like shaking thinking about it <laughs> So I can't wait. I cannot wait. So tune in. That's starting next week. Um, But then, of course, we had our other reality TV uh, that we were talking about. And I put a poll up on Instagram because in our DMs and in our comments on YouTube, it seemed pretty split between three. And so Mm -hmm. I was like, I need a poll. And you all showed up and showed out. And the poll results are in. And 48% of you have voted that we do Trader Season mm-hmm. 2. So Trader Season 2 is going to be yeah. our and the others were split kind of amongst it, but 48 Yeah, was, between yeah. The Valley and uh, Love is Blind Sweden. And I know so many people were excited about The Valley, yeah. Love is Blind Sweden. And I know there are also people who have seen Traders 2 before and are like, we don't want you guys to cover it because we've yeah. already seen it. But here's the thing. You haven't heard our takes on it yet. Yeah, you watch The Bachelor and you already kind of know what happens at the end of the episode. You, you don't, we don't come here for like yeah. spoilers. You come you here know, for our takes, we, our incredible personalities, <laughs> so our fanfare, our pageantry. So 
If you'd like to join the pageantry, if you'd like to see the, the pageant in action. Yes. That's what we're going to do. Please come and welcome. Um, but if you're like, no, forget that. Here's the bottom line. We will be still doing the circle every week. That will yeah. be our consistent. And with Traders 2, what we're going to be doing, and that will be our next episode next week on Wednesday, we're going to be doing big chunks at a time. So like three, four episodes at a time. I'll post on Instagram. But that means that it'll be done in a couple weeks. We'll be yeah. done with Trader Season 2 in a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, and so then what that will look like is maybe we'll jump to Love is Blind Sweden or The Valley. We'll talk about that when we get there. But you all are going to get what you want, baby, mm -hmm. at some point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mama's going to take care <laughs> do you ever, of do you. Ever, do you ever wink but do the wrong one? All the I time. I do that all the time. Where all like, the time. I'll, where, I'll, where I'll, like, I'll look at and then wink <laughs> the wrong one. So you just and then I just go a wild open Yeah, eye. that happens all the time when I'm like, when I'll do it to Ember. I'll go. And I'm like, oh. Gets the message across. Yeah, the like, idea yeah. is there. People see the wild open eye and they yeah. know what's going ah. on. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited. I cannot wait. So that is the tea. Thank you all so much for um, setting in your votes and opinions. And it was yeah. so helpful and appreciated. Appreciated, And we cannot wait to get into it. Yes, I'm so excited. that starts next week, baby. So Trader Season 2 next Wednesday. Uh, probably episodes 1 through 3 or 1 through 4. And then uh, The Circle on yes. Friday. Um, okay, so let's get into what we're here for. Yes. Let's talk about the relationships of it all. Our by the way, by the way, just side note, you love that new term, of it all. Is I'm noticing a, it a lot. Is that a new term? No, no, no. I don't think it's a new term, but I've noticed that like you've kind of been saying it a lot, mm -hmm. and I feel like it's kind of not new for you, Yeah. but I do feel like it's a very good term, and I, if you mind if I steal it. Please go for it. Um, you have been using serving so much lately. That's I been have great. been. <laughs> yeah. Everything serving, you know, which yeah. I love. I love that you're It's a you're great using one. I know it's Like the best. it's giving, it's mm -hmm. serving. Yeah, you're doing it serving. It's a, it's a good way to say like this was the energy of the whole thing. I know, thing. I know. Yeah. I love that for So the you. of it all is mm -hmm. kind of in the same world. So I just want to point out that I've been noticing this and I like it. Thank you. The fact of the matter is I say certain phrases quite frequently and it makes people bananas oh, really? i get messages all the time they're like <laughs> stop <laughs> saying this i'm like all. i can't help it it's when i'm <laughs> when i'm flowing when i'm in flow yes. state and the yeah. words are coming Whoa. out yeah i just I, I practice i try but you know what that's just well, what i, I like sometimes. about it is i don't I don't think I've ever heard anyone use it really. I mean, like no, obviously I've heard used. it before, but I I like it so. I it's it's, it's very used, but I will take credit for Good. it. So thank Good. you. Okay, sorry, random. <laughs> I'm in tangent vibes today, so let's keep keep me on track. Um, keep me on schedule. So yes, let's get into yes. all of this. Uh, as I mentioned before, we have some big topics mm -hmm. that seem to be coming up mm -hmm. a lot again frequently. Um, but first, a couple quick fire about us personally. Number one, got the question, do you still put his balls on your face? Yes, mm. that's not going to change. Mm. Sorry, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to change with age. We'll be old <laughs> in the, yeah, in the I, nursing I don't, home. And yeah, you'll... Like, Actually, I'm done with the balls. Yeah. I've decided today is the last ball day. No more balls in the face. Uh, yes. I do. I wanted to bring it up, though, because when I tell you all, and I've mentioned this before, but it continues. When I tell you all that I think, no exaggeration, I probably get a message. If I'm checking my DMs, I get a message maybe once every couple weeks for the past few years. Right. With someone saying, hey, just FYI. Just a ball update. We finally tried the balls in the face and I love it. So all I'm saying, and I'll and I'll keep screaming it from the mountaintops, the rooftops. It might not be for you, mm -hmm. but if you're on the fence and you're like, "Hey, why not try it?" It is pretty confirmed. If I were to be taking a scientific poll right now from my messages that I've gotten, I've never heard anything negative from some. I've never gotten a bad review. Someone's never sent me right. a DM and said, "Fuck you, bitch." I tried the balls in the face. <laughs> I went to the ball spa. And yeah, it was and it was horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. Just putting that out there. So there's that update. Um, also, someone asked what our first date was. And I wanted to address that because our very <laughs> first date. What was our first date? <laughs> you don't well, no, I do. I just am testing you. So go ahead. 
<laughs> Let me remind you what our first official date because we had been date. like flirt, flirt, flirting, yeah, ta- yeah, yeah, telling yeah. each other that we liked each other, crushes, blah, 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 you know, all of this. And our first official date that Evan t- took me on oh my God, is what? he took me to my favorite restaurant. He picked me up flowers, took me to my favorite restaurant, and then drove me to this gorgeous lookout point near our house, sat me on a bench, and told me that he was in love with me. <laughs> first date. <laughs> So date sweet. number one i know it was so lovely you you are bachelor energy from day one we're meant to be recapping I'm, the bachelor i was there for the right reasons you were there for the right <laughs> reasons and from day one you're the type of person who first date you're like i love you now granted we were friends we'd known each other yeah. since we were 10 years old a little bit of context it wasn't like i i was like hey nice to meet you can i take you out on a date i love you by the way it's like i'd known you for years yeah we've been friends we since we were been 10 connecting for like a long time at that point but <laughs> yes the long and short of it i will say this <laughs> i said i said i her? love her real fucking early <laughs> yes yeah, so fast like really fast <laughs> but again like you were saying we've known each other since we were 10 have been friends for yeah. years and years yeah. but so it was it was, like it you was were letting me know that you, like, that i think you would love me for a long time that's true so you just were like letting me know on our first date <laughs> oh you said it back yeah i did of yeah. course i did what am i gonna the pressure i get it I didn't feel oh. it, but I know. <laughs> what did I me? take you to? Of course, to... I said it back. I was so in love with where you. Where did I take you to dinner? GK Factory, probably. Peking Dragon. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, no, you splurged. <laughs> I'm being serious. That was a nice <laughs> restaurant. Now there's all these posts. That people are like, "Would you date him again if he took you to, you know, uh, Cheesecake, Factory. Cheesecake Factory?" And everybody's like, "No, yes, no, yes." But thank you for sticking with me. <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you this right now. If someone takes me to Cheesecake Factory, I, Spot. I live and I love. Yeah, I love Cheesecake Factory. So many options. That's the thing too. I feel like it's a it's a nice restaurant to take someone to because you're like, you will find something you like here. Yeah. There are 550 options on the menu, so. You know, for some, you don't know if you're going on a date with someone who exactly. has certain food intolerances, is a picky yeah. eater. Cheesecake Factory, you have all the options. All so the options I think it's available. a great, great idea. Yeah. And it's not too high pressure of like, oh, I'm at some wildly fancy restaurant where right. I feel like uncomfy. But, you know, some people are like, no, wine and dine. Yeah. But it's a nice restaurant. It's not cheap. Definitely not cheap. <laughs> we'll no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Especially that era. This shit costs it's always a lot of been money. expensive. Especially yeah. that era. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. well, thanks. I, I, that's just my personal opinion. I love it. So, yeah, that was okay. our first date, everybody. Um, God, that's crazy. I love you. I mean, have some sort of swag, Evan. That just it was shows so you right lovely. There. I knew it day one. It's like, oh, I love you. <laughs> what did you just say about that thing? It was literally, it's, I, was, I was basically, you know what it was? I was love is blind. Like, that's what I'm saying. Sitting in the you pods, they tell each other, I love you within two weeks, and then they're getting married. Like, that was me. I'm saying you were born to recap reality TV because you can relate. I can relate to he falling can relate. in love fast. Yep, yep. Okay. He feels it. A little bit of expertise. Um, all right, let's talk cheating. Let's talk cheating. I know. What a, what a, what a switch what of a direction. Left turn. <laughs> First date to cheat. <laughs> let's talk cheating. But before we talk cheating, we got to take another quick pause. Um, family, so I've been with Evan for a long time, mm-hmm. obviously. I've also been with my own skin for quite a while. This skin is 35 plus years old, baby. Almost middle-aged, wow, wow. Um, Here's the thing, over the years, I've tried a lot of skincare to take care of this skin, and I was getting really sick of cycling through ineffective skincare trends and overcomplicated routines, but then I discovered today's sponsor, and I am so happy. I love it so much. It is One Skin. Their products make it easy to keep your skin healthy while looking and feeling your best. No complicated routine, no multiple step protocols, just simple, scientifically validated solutions. Um, we've been both using One Skin yeah. for over a year now, and we absolutely love it, and I have absolutely seen the difference in my skin. I'll tell you that. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I'm, I might be tired. But I look incredible. You look gorgeous. You know what I mean? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Uh, the secret <laughs> is One Skin's proprietary OS01 peptide. It's the first ingredient proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. Mm-hmm. And they've got several studies to back it up. Like Jess said, we've been using their products for a while now, and I am hooked. Uh, but don't just take my word for it. One Skin has over 4,000 five star reviews and were recognized by Fast Company as one of the most innovative brands in 2024. I just love One Skin so much. I use it on my face, my eyes, my whole body, baby. And I love the results. And I am also obsessed with the ease of it. Like just cleanse, pat your skin dry and apply twice daily. That's it. That's it. And by the way, do you have other products that you can't live without? 
Here's the deal. One Skin's topical face, eye, body, and shield can all be used with other products and easily fit into your current skincare routine. One Skin creates next level skincare truly and bottom line, they believe the purpose of skincare is not just to improve how we look, but to optimize our skin biology so that it's more resilient to the aging process. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. By focusing on the cellular aspects of aging, One Skin keeps your skin looking and acting younger for longer. Get started today with 15% off using code MOMDAD at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code MOMDAD. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we've sent you. Again, that is oneskin.co code mom dad all right <clears throat> let's get time to it. talk cheating so mm. i'll tell you this fam this is one of the um questions that we got a lot yeah a lot of in the question box it mm -hmm. was a lot of questions comments about cheating um a few of them being Someone said, advice wanted. Dad, are most men cheating? Mom, how do you trust dad? Someone else asked, is it possible for a couple to be healthy after infidelity? Mm -hmm. Which those are, you know, two separate things kind yeah. of that come together that we can talk about. Before we answer this question, I want to make something very clear. If even though Evan says he's a mind doctor, let's make something very clear. We are mind not surgeon. <laughs> mind surgeon. Um, we are not doctors. We are not therapists. So yes. please, this is a very uh, intense, complicated question that is something that is important to talk to professionals and seek professional yes. advice from. So I want to put that out there before we dive into that um, and just know that these answers are kind of just personally, yeah, I guess, how we feel, feel yeah. um, and our personal takes on it and maybe our own experiences. Yeah. But talk to a therapist or a professional about something yeah. like this. Um, so I guess the first question, dad, do all men cheat? Oof. Do all men cheat? No, mm -hmm. but I understand why people could feel that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I think, well, people cheat for different reasons too, right? Like there's yeah. all sorts of different reasons. why. I don't know all the reasons why people cheat, but you know, all men cheat. No, definitely not all men cheat, but I could see how you could feel that way. Sure. Um, But something that I also think about too, which is interesting is like, Sometimes I feel like almost how certain people go, is there a God? I wonder if there's a God or not. And like certain people go like, I don't know. I don't think about it. When it comes to like cheating, mm -hmm. I do feel like people almost have a bent towards the desire for the unknown more than other people do. Mm -hmm. So like I, there's certain people that are just kind of more like, no, I'm just totally cool with this just relationship that I'm in. And I like I like the safety of it, you know, the safety of like this this thing that we've agreed upon. And I feel like I can you know what I mean? I feel comfortable in that. And I and I don't have this kind of big like I wonder who that person is and if they like me and as much. Yeah. And then I feel like some people really have it. They kind of panic with the whole like, am I going to be with this one person forever and only one partner forever? Yeah. Am I going to get bored? And, yeah. you know, oh, I'm, so, I'm kind of I'm going to miss the chase and the excitement right. of it. And da, 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 you know, well, so. I don't know. It's yeah. like an interesting thing but I notice out in the wild. It then, like, but it then seems then like how there is uh, what we talked about in last episode, how important communication is. And so much of that is, you know, maybe not learning how to communicate um, or tap into uh, the the conversations or even like the exploration of feelings. Like when people are feeling that way, like, you know, exploring ethical non-monogamy yeah. and getting into that and, you know, and, and those different avenues, but instead um, not having communicated that with a partner or can, you know, communicating that late in the game with a yeah. partner or, or not committing to a committed relationship too early. To where you need to kind of like, you know what I mean? Like right. when you're dating people or whatever, like some people jump in quick and just like make decisions and then realize, well, maybe I'm not ready for this. And right. Then... There's definitely that. I feel like that's one piece of it. Yeah. I know that um, uh, Esther Perel has talked before when I've listened to different like podcasts and things discussing, you know, the idea that so often cheating, it's not about the other partner no it's almost like rarely it's yeah it's not about the other partner not giving something it's about that own person and how they're you know dealing or not dealing with things in their life like looking for validation yes you know yes. A, a fear of 
getting old. I mean, I mean there's so many different things yeah. of reasons why people cheat. I feel like they're very, very rarely like I'm looking for something else in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost just like a, I, it's like a thing. I need a hit. Right. You know? Right. Right. And there's so like, there's so many different avenues of conversation. That's yeah. what I'm bringing up, you know, diving into someone who's a professional and therapist about like, why do people cheat and who cheats sure. and like that type of thing. Like that's more of the doctor's answer. Right? Yeah. That's more right, like, right. Right. Seek that out. But what we can give you is the question was one of the, what part of the question was, um, mom, how do you trust dad? Mm. So I can give you my personal yeah. take and experience on this. Um, I don't. <laughs> I have air tags in every one of his pants sewn in. I have drones flown. I have. That sounds expensive. <laughs> um, okay. If you just follow twenty four seven. I never have to worry about trust. <laughs> well, my journey was um, a bumpy one mm. for sure. I've shared before about um, my past and the cheating that has occurred in my past, um, whether it be against me and or in my family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so that is definitely a trauma. It's a trigger for me. Yeah. And I do not trust easily. And that was always something in our relationship, especially in the early years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I definitely put that on you a lot it was a lot of right. me living very anxiously and it was definitely a deep anxious attachment because of me being terrified and my perspective being everyone does this and at yeah. some point you will and then you know later on in life identifying that like so much of that is coming from me having been believing the whole time that I would I could do something to make someone cheat, right. which, is, which is nonsense, right? Or do something to make them not cheat. You know what I mean? There's kind of this like, right? Uh, it's it's up to me. Right. Which yeah. is a very like egocentric yeah. way. It's like, you know, I, I, I could be the most incredible, perfect partner in the entire world and my partner could still cheat on me or I could be the worst partner in the world and be terrible and the person wouldn't cheat on me. Right, like that's, right, that's right. That's not in my control. Um, and so how, how do I trust dad? Well, I will say this first and foremost, being with a partner who gives you reason to trust is huge. Mm. You've never done anything or gotten close to doing anything that's made me feel distrustful. But I have something to tell you. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but one thing I will say is yes, you struggled with, you know, from, from your past and from life stuff before you definitely had like a pre you know thing going on there yeah, but i did the classic super fuck up that partners do when someone has kind of a predisposition towards that fear and it's the omission thing oh yeah and when we i were younger. and That's it was true. the classic like oh i went to my friend's house yeah and had a good time but what i omitted was that there was this other girl there now, yeah. I didn't even like even maybe talk to the girl, but by me not bringing up every single like every person yeah. that was there. Yeah. And then she finds out later when I'm talking to someone else. Oh, yeah. um, That girl was there. What was her name? Da, 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 da. And then yeah. now it looks like I was trying, which I was. Yeah. Trying to not bring it up because I thought it would start this whole thing. But that's not but that that's a version of lying. That's a version right? of not being honest. No, and then it true. creates more of a complex. So that like to all the guys out there, to all the girls out there, to anyone out there who kind of just generally omits to kind of, you know, save the other person the headache, mm -hmm. I will say it will come back triple fold because then you'll look like someone who's hiding something. Yeah, and then you're also like, you're actively, that's actively difficult and like hard for your partner. Well, then they're like, when is it, just an omission to protect me. When's it a real thing? You exactly. start then having a and complex. It'll, it'll make us spiral. Yeah, I actually. So I definitely about made that it way worse in our younger years. Yes, yes you yes. you had a definitely a predisposition to it. Yeah, and then I doubled and tripled it during those young years because I was like always doing that move of like, well, you know, I don't want just to trip out about it because I mean nothing even happened, but I just don't want her. And then all of a sudden it's like, yeah, one comment made by a friend and the whole yeah. thing. Is and the 10 fact times of the worse. matter is, here's the truth: I probably would have like gotten upset, like. If you, yeah, you if could you have felt a little have, pang of jealousy. If you wouldn't have omitted, I would have been, because this is when Jess was in jealous era. Mm. 
it was I, I was hot everybody like I was in jealous era and something like that would have set me off without you without the omission so you're right you probably did then avoid in a, that, an initial an bump. initial bump but what what we had to then get through in our younger years gosh this was when we were like just starting yeah. to date like those first two years we were like 16 17 but dude when um, you're 16 you're like the most insecure jealous person on the planet everyone's like oh. but 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 then what we had to deal with yeah. in our younger years already was you understanding that like when you would um omit that yeah. that it was because you didn't want to be uncomfortable oh, because you didn't 100%. want me to get jealous and then what i had to realize yeah. is like oh my, the way that i'm reacting to this person who is not doing anything inappropriate not even speaking to this individual, right, 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 the way right. that i'm reacting is not appropriate like and i have to yeah. go inward and go jessica you need to do some serious intake inward and go why do you have all these feelings? We got to dive down into childhood. We got to dive down into your insecurities. Like, why are you having yeah. these these reactions? Um, but no, that's very true. That's very true. Yeah, the omitting. It's, it's thanks for omitting my omitting. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I was definitely not. Yeah, uh, no, guilt, I was. Like, I was more thinking. I was more thinking the past or the last ten years, not like <laughs> like eighteen years ago. But yeah, you had like a pretty wild transformation with that i feel like. well and that's pretty, and so that's what i was wanting yeah, to, yeah. to to talk about is that like i said um obviously there were the omissions in the very yeah. early days of our relationship but i feel like we did w work through that yeah, pretty quickly time, time. um and the realization of like what omitting can do to your partner mm -hmm. um i think hit you and struck big you. time big time um but you know my big shift came from genuinely just internal work yeah it came through therapy mm -hmm. it came through diving into why yeah um and like i said it's i think it's extremely important to be with someone that you trust who has not given you reason not to trust if that's you know we'll get into the more of that in yeah. a moment but um for me yeah with my past i'm like i gotta be with somebody who has given me zero reason to not trust yeah, them. Yeah. Zero reason to not trust them. Yes. That's zero reason to not. Giving you reason to trust them. Giving yeah. me reason to trust yeah. them. Um, so that was like, that's necessary for me. Um, but then on top of that, it kind of became the, the idea of how do I trust my partner was, well, I don't have any control mm. over what someone else does. Mm. So, I could live in fear, which I was every day that this person was going to cheat on me, even though they had given me no reason to. I could live in that anxious state of fear and spiral every day, um, but I was making myself miserable. Or I could just go, we take this day by day. I'm evaluating who my partner is. I feel as though I can trust them. I'm trying to be the best partner that I can be. Um, and that's all that I can do. Yeah. And and I, I can't just sit there and just grind and go, what if, what if, what if? Because it was making my life hell. And the irony that it was like, you weren't doing anything. And yet I was making myself miserable. Yeah. You know, and starting to really process what jealousy means. And I've shared about that. I shared about it last week when we started to have um, a lot of different people from the ethical non-monogamy community come on the podcast and they were talking about jealousy and different yeah. books and stuff that yeah. they had read th read and things they had processed that was really helpful for me too mm -hmm. to to just dive into what jealousy is yeah. um but yeah that's mm. kind of the long and short of it for me i mean and that's like you know we're talking about it like it's a thing but it's no easy feat that's like oh, saying still... it's like in a way it's like saying this is how I go got over my fear of heights. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Go ahead and stand on top of that building right now and look down and be like, just get over it. It's yeah. not as simple as that. It's no. a, it's a, it's a process. And you know? and oh, and and trust. I, I it's still a thing that flares up for yeah. me. And I, you know, it's funny. I feel it coming a mile away. It's funny because it's so random to me now. Oh, when all of a sudden, yeah, I'll like you'll just like be a... like out of nowhere and be yeah. like, say something. I'm like, huh? yeah like, what no i'll feel it coming heard that in years you i'll know? feel yeah, that yeah. flare up and and a lot of times when that probably happens, a symptom of something else though well right exactly yeah, yeah. a lot of times when all of a sudden i'm feeling that again this is just my experience yeah. and my journey 
is that it's something else. Other yeah. stresses that are brewing that agitate that, that are making me feel insecure and I'm getting in my head about things. Yeah. And then all of a sudden these old traumas and triggers from my childhood are coming back and I'm going, oh God, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is how it all, you know, and then yeah. and those alarm bells are going off. And that's been a reminder for me, like, it's time to call the therapist. Yeah. It's time to do some meditative work. It's time yeah. to just, you know, reevaluate and... Yeah. Mm. Uh, but then there's the question that someone said, um, can a relationship work after infidelity? This is a great question. This is a great question. Really good question. Which again, I am no doctor, but I will give my thoughts but The mind surgeon on it. is here. Don't, don't <laughs> Please you worry. Don't, no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. Uh, um, but before we get into that, let's, uh, let's take one final pause. Mm -hmm. um, family. So specifically, specifically the last six months, I have been making a concentrated effort to make some lifestyle changes to create healthier habits mm -hmm. for me. I've been on this journey and I've always struggled with that, but I felt in my 35th year that it was time. And one of those was attempting to eat in a way in which I got my good nutrients in by eating those fruits and veggies. And to be honest, that hasn't been hard. It hasn't been hard because of daily harvest. Achieving my wellness goals is more about making healthy habits and less about quick fixes. And that's why I love daily harvest. They take the work out of keeping healthy habits. So all I have to do is enjoy and enjoy. I do. I love my daily harvest, everybody. It's the best. It's the best. It's so good. They take the planning, prep, and cleanup out of cooking by delivering our favorite veggie and fruit packed meals straight to our door. With Daily Harvest, we're getting tons of plant-based options, built-in organic fruits and vegetables that are easy to prep and free of gluten, fillers, seed oils, added starches, and sugars. It really takes the guesswork and effort out of eating food I know is good for me. Mm -hmm. And listen, we all know usually keeping healthy habits means the same old boring meals, but not with Daily Harvest. They've got so many great options for any time of day. The array of delicious smoothies and harvest bowls they have is truly incredible. I, of course, have my go-to favorites like the mint and cacao smoothie and the cauliflower pesto harvest bowl, but I am constantly trying different meals because Daily Harvest has so many great options. I tried the carrot and cinnamon smoothie the other day and it was incredible. So good. Um, also with the warmer weather coming, check out their pops. That mango passion fruit pop is just so, so, so good. It's calling my name right now. And on top of it all, by using only recyclable or compostable packaging when possible, Daily Harvest is doing their part to take care of our earth, which helps me limit my waste. Create healthy habits that last with Daily Harvest. For a limited time only, go to dailyharvest.com slash mom dad to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash mom dad for $30 off your first box and free shipping. Dailyharvest.com slash mom dad. Okay. So is it possible for a couple to be healthy mm. after infidelity? <sighs> so, so deep, <laughs> so deep. Um, my first thoughts are anything's possible. Sure. Right. Anything's mm -hmm. possible. So that's like, I don't think you can say yes or no. I just think anything's possible. The, the, I think the circumstances are huge. But I also think it has a lot to do with... The, I, I. It's interesting. It's like... I think it has a lot... Because I think I think there's kind of this general... The, the person that got cheated on mm -hmm. is kind of the... Can they survive this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's also the like, is the person that cheated healing mm -hmm. from their behavioral problems? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So there's kind of this like, is your habits changed? Are you giving the person who is trying to survive in the relationship, like you said, reason to trust, ways of healing, support, not just guilty... Yeah. You know, waiting for the clock to run yeah. out of how and long person, I'm going to feel bad for and this. And the person who cheated is going to have to know that they forever are going to be in the process of proving themselves. Like there is a level like of like when you make a mistake, you can be forgiven. Yeah. But the mistake is still like it still happened. Exactly. So it's not going to be like, a oh, after a couple months, this is going to be good. Like this is going to it's like it's it is grief. Yes. You literally it's a death kind you, of. you 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 put a death to what was trust mm -hmm. and an agreed 
concept in your relationship. So just like grief, it's not linear. Right. So someone will grieve your actions randomly. Maybe for the first few months after the partner who got cheated on is like pretty low key about it. And then right. all of a sudden a few years in something might happen and it might hit them out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, or like it might be really intense for the first few months and then be okay. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, like random years in, like it's, it's not going to be linear. So the person who did the cheating is going to have to know like, Hey, this is not going to be something that you can, this isn't going to be a quick fix. Yeah. I really do think that People focus so much more on the cheated. Yeah, of the course, cheaty, because of everything. Because that there's they how are you going to heal? Through. How are you going to get through this? Which is obvious. Yeah. But I think there's a ton of emphasis on the cheater in regards. To, there needs to be. Yes. Because it's like. Well, they're the one who has to do the, they, well, the work. They, they, they need to do the, the life change they do, work. Well, and not only the life change work, but then like, like you were saying, it's like, okay, there could be this, like anytime we make a mistake, there's this how long until it doesn't feel like it's still around mm -hmm. anymore, mm -hmm. right? Anytime you do anything, it's kind of like, okay, I mean, if you get in an accident and, and you, it's your fault, the insurance, you have to pay more for a while and then it slowly goes away and you're like, okay, we're good now. All, all is forgiven. So when it comes to the cheater, there can be this feeling, I'm sure, that like you can get lulled into like, we're good now. Yeah. It's been a year. We've cried our eyes out. You're over it, right? Mm -hmm. So if then the cheaty brings it up three years later and starts bawling, the cheater could be like, oh, are you serious? Like we're still exactly. talking about this. And then it, now we're here and now we're there. And then the person hangs on more because they don't feel validated. So mm -hmm. it's like, I think there's a, there's so much. Yeah, like we need, like the, you would really have to focus on the cheater and be like, is the cheater making the changes? And is the I cheater, would, aside from the obvious changes of stop cheating, and I would is the imagine, behavioral change And different? I would imagine that the, the temptation would be to never talk about it with each other because it brings a lot of pain up. But like, probably mm. the best thing to do was have for probably the rest of your late relationship pretty regular conversations yes. about it. And have to be so clear in communication yeah. with each other with your grief and yes. how you're feeling and the the feelings on both sides, yeah. right? Um, that that would be, I think, a really God. There's, I mean, there's so many difficult. Parts how how to do it, you feel? How would like, I do? Like, how would you do with cheating? You know, I think personally, um, it depends again on the relationship yeah. with our relationship, because you're someone who I I'm like, I want to be with you for the rest of my yeah. life that I feel like it's something I would want to work through. Yeah. Um, but it would also depend on the context. That's sure. a huge thing. Like for me, um, just the physical, I think that I would want to process through that and yes. continue on the relationship. But if it was an emotional affair, I don't know if I'd be able to handle that right i don't right. i think i would maybe try but i don't think it's something that i could ultimately deal with but purely physical m much you could put your mind around that a lot more yeah again it would be so difficult yeah um but i think again because of our specific relationship it'd be like okay this is something that i want to make work yeah. what about you i think you're better at this than me <laughs> Better is a weird word, but better at che che cheating or getting better cheated at on. getting <laughs> cheated on. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I do honestly feel like it's funny. We talk about you were being this extra jealous person in our early relationships. And, you know, we all have pangs of jealousy that come and go now. Now, I honestly feel like you're the one in the relationship that could handle heavier things happening than I could. Yeah. So but it's like I, I started. But I think a lot of that's because the it work was so done, prevalent yeah. when I was young and then in childhood and stuff that it's like I have done a lot of internal work sure. with it that I've tried to you know I've I've I, I've run through all the scenarios in my head and my anxiety of like what would you do You've if done and the I've worst case scenario it. and worked through yeah those. yeah which I don't necessarily recommend but like that's what I've done. so you have a more balanced balanced approach though of like a holistic you kind of the whole balanced, your whole yeah. a balanced approach <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay um so your balanced approach <laughs> is that you kind of I feel like you've taken the whole concept to church you know what i mean like you've taken yeah. the whole thing and kind of dealt with it for me i feel like i'm like mr super long leash but the second you go past the leash i re i would really that's struggle. a wild example having someone on a leash 
that is. I didn't mean it in that it's way. Like I mean you, more like no, I mean like I'm cool with like you have, I'm, I'm pretty I'm a pretty chill you partner. You are so chill. And I'm not jealous. We're like, where were you? Who are you talking to? Your boundaries extend far. Okay, but once you yeah, boundaries instead of leash. Let's let's, let's <laughs> try that one. Um, my boundaries extend very far. Yeah. I'm not a jealous person no. when it comes to day to day. No, you know what I mean. Like you go out with your friends, you do this thing. I'm not jealous. I'm not mm-hmm. jealous. I'm not jealous. But if you were to do something past what my boundary yep. is, yep. it might be one of those things that like. I think I would not handle it nearly as good as you. And I, I, and I, and I, cause, but can I say this? I want to take that out. I don't think there's a handle it as well. Okay. Because my, bo- my point is this, when it comes to, can a couple be healthy after infidelity? Yeah. It depends on what you want and who you are. That's true. And there's no, when someone is the one who gets cheated on, there is no like, in my opinion, again, I'm not a doctor, but like right or wrong way to feel about it. Like, it's not like, a, oh, I'm, g-, you could say that person handled it better because they, you know, process it more. No, if you're handling it is you absolutely, you know, devastated, spiraling. I mean, that's, it's valid. So yeah. what I'm saying is I think it's just like, maybe I would be more apt to try to make, keep a relationship going versus you might be like i don't think i can do this anymore let me make a caveat though yeah more what i'm saying is not better or worse better or worse is like really reductive language for what i'm more referring to what i'm saying is this i think you wear your heart on your sleeve more than i do so you can kind of you kind of get a reaction earlier on but when you go deeper in Mm -hmm. you have less ego than i do so for me it's like my boundary extends farther Mm mm-hmm but the second you get to the boundary, I think I have a bigger ego than you do. So mm. the cheating, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do feel like I haven't done that work as much. Mm. The outer skirt ego mm-hmm. fence I have out there is is more concrete where yours is like, you know, has some air through it. So I feel like for me, it's like the blow to my ego. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? Aside from the fact that I would feel betrayed or whatever, I also think that there would be a big ego piece. Mm. That would happen, I think, much heavier for me than it would for you. Mm-hmm. So that's more when I say worse. It's more like I could see a surprising collapse. Yeah. Because, you know, so that's kind of. Yeah. So basically coming back from that, I think, would be much harder for me. Yeah. Okay. Then I think you, I think you would have an initial boosh. Yeah. And then come back yeah. i think i would be okay at first and then it, and then it would like yeah. start to yeah. ripple into my life you know what i mean and i'd have to really start yeah. i think I'd, it, it'd be the delayed effect yeah for me well then off of that the, the the question itself can a couple ever be healthy after infidelity i would say yes a couple yeah. can be in fact i know some people who for sure there's been infidelity and and years later they have a, a really great healthy relationship mm-hmm. But with that being said, it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah, it's. And it's not going to just be. It's not, I'm chill. It's not. Yeah, it's not going to just be work of like, hey, let's shove it down and just process. It's yeah. like there needs to be a commitment to being like, I'm going to have to do so much work in the interim, I would imagine, too, where it's like we're going to have to take a pause for a minute because I need to examine myself. And let's just say I'm the one who got cheated on. I need to examine myself and, and take a pause and say, is this something that I can really live with? Like, yeah. is this something that I'll, will I ever be able to trust this person? Will I be at peace? You know, so much internal work has to go into it. And then also external work, yeah. p- work together and separately. And, um, but I also think it's one of those things too, that I want to make so clear is it's just different for each person. It just depends on what your bound, like it depends yeah. on what your boundary is. It's like for some people, it's like you cheat on me, never again, we're done. And I say, bless. If that's your boundary, un- incredible. Like that's you, then know, you know yourself and that's how it is. But then for some people, it's like, no, I want to keep trying. Bless. Amazing. Yeah. So I think it's one of those things where it's like, it just depends on who you are, what your personal history is, your boundaries, how, you know, what you want moving yeah. forward. Um, it's just different for each person. And I do think you can be healthy after, but I think it's going to be a probably a lifelong journey. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's never going to be gone. No. You know? Yeah, 100%. It's, uh, the, again, those are my non doctor thoughts, but that's. Just but yeah, yeah, I think the answer is yes. Yeah. You absolutely can. Yeah. But don't underestimate 
the amount of work it's going to take. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think so. I think so. Okay. Um, next more? question. Yeah. yeah. I've got a couple more. Another one. We got a couple of these. Mm. And uh, this one hit me. I feel like this is a really important one. Someone said, have either of you ever felt lonely in the relationship? And how did you deal? Mm. And got a couple other questions about loneliness in a yeah. relationship. Yeah. So have either of you ever felt lonely in the relationship and how did you deal? Jess hasn't, but I have. So <laughs> we've worked through that. No, I mean, definitely. Absolutely. I think this Long-term is Long-term relationship, loneliness happening for sure. I think the bottom line is any relationship. Like if you ever felt lonely in a friendship, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you're going to feel lonely. And I think... I think talking about loneliness in a relate in especially in a long term relationship is so important because I don't think it's something that is talked about before you get into a like committed long term relationship. It's like, oh, what's my partner? You know, at the beginning, you're like, oh, we have so many good times together. We're spending all this time together or, you know, it's all honeymoon phasey, all of that. Like at some point you will get lonely in the relationship mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and For me, if I'm talking to a friend, if I'm addressing myself internally, the biggest thing I've learned is that when I have felt lonely in our relationship, I can't put everything that I need on one individual. I can't. I can't expect you to fulfill all my needs. Yeah. Just because I love you and we've, you know, yeah. and we were, we've been together for so long and it's, there are so many good things. I can't put that pressure on mm-hmm. you to fill all my loneliness gaps. I can't put that pressure on anybody. Yeah. Friends, lovers, you know, husbands, wives, partners, you know, whatever. I, you just can't. Um, it has to be internal. Yeah. When I have felt really lonely in the relationship, I've had to really examine learning how to be with myself. Mm. Because I think there's a difference between feeling like I'm lonely in this relationship because my partner is not present. Yeah, That's a different conversation if we're having a partner who, you know, is not emotionally meeting your needs isn't available that's a different conversation we're talking about our relationship where you're a great partner but inevitably like i will feel lonely yeah um it's so important to maintain plenty of relationship outside of a romantic relationship Mm -hmm. but i can have amazing friends an amazing partner and still have phases of feeling lonely and that's why it's so important to cultivate your relationship with yourself yeah learning how to be alone and be a friend to yourself is and a lover to yourself Mm. is really important yeah i agree you know i agree 100 percent. i mean to piggyback off what you're saying to more go into the partner side of things too like i think that you experience loneliness when you're expecting your partner to be a mind reader Mm. personally Mm -hmm. so it's like let's say i need let's say i'm really feeling like i need support yeah and i'm feeling like i need someone to cheer me on i need a little pick me up you need a boost right i'm feeling down Mm -hmm. and you're not really doing that Mm -hmm. just naturally in our life impossible go ahead right right impossible I'm the best and when i mean cheer i mean i mean literally i want you in a cheerleader outfit as i'm walking out the door oh my god okay <laughs> keep going Yo. no but what i'm saying is uh um like you know what i mean like let's say i'm yeah, feeling no, lately course. like i want you to be like babe you're killing it yeah. and you're an amazing dad and yeah. you're the, like i'm feeling i need to pick me up mm-hmm. but i don't say a word to you and then i'm kind of sitting there going like she's not really like cheering me on or really Mm -hmm. there for me i feel lonely i feel like no one's got my back right Mm -hmm. and you can kind of start feeling loneliness you start feeling this feeling of no one understands you energy but you didn't communicate it's not sexy to communicate sometimes 
You know what I mean? Yeah. What's sexy in your mind is like the mystery. The, of it all. Well, just like the, you know, I'm feeling down, and they come in and save the day. Like that's very romantic and yes. fun to feel that way. It's very right? rom com. It's, it's very rom com. They know they show up without you asking. It's also a very early days relationship. Correct. We're not talking ten years in. You know, when you're yeah. first dating, you everyone's just on full power of mode, course. nos engaged. Yeah. Like you're everything you ever wanted, and they're everything you ever, and you're just giving it all all the time. But when you normalize into a life. And you got to take care of yourself sometimes. You got to do things. You're not thinking constantly in terms of what does my partner need today? Mm -hmm. You're just, how do I survive? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a big, like, in addition to self work, to where you're not relying on your partner to not feel lonely, mm -hmm. you also need to communicate w when you need something. And if they don't do it over time, which I've been very guilty of, um, then that's when like a bigger conversation that's when loneliness you're kind of you're kind of experiencing loneliness in like the real form and you're like yeah i need help or something needs to change but there also is this like you can't expect your partner to know when you need something no because they're in their own world too Very true. and they could be feeling the exact same way yeah. you know it's like a loneliness it's kind of like this if you have a friend and you're and you're feeling like you're close with them but then they're hanging out with this other crew and you feel left out right if you never even mention to your friend like oh what are you guys doing tonight can i come cruise and your friend could be like, oh, yeah, totally. I thought you were busy. I didn't, you didn't want to come or whatever. But you could let that loneliness fester mm -hmm. and be like, they don't like me or they're lame or, or they've changed or whatever. But literally what could have happened is they just thought you were busy or that on Tuesday nights you do dinner with your girl, whatever time. it is, sure, right? Yeah. But that's all from not communicating. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like it's a big like you can kind of let your own loneliness build because you're not making very small steps to like fix it. Yeah. But the answer is. Yes, loneliness in a relationship is like a real fucking thing, mm -hmm. especially the longer your relationship goes. And mm -hmm. you can fall into kind of patterns where you just kind of coast mm -hmm. big time. Yeah. No, what you're saying is so true. It's so true. But then also then the caveat is that even if you have a partner who, let's just say, is doing it all right, right. you can still feel of course, lonely of course, in a of relationship. Course. Like that just is what it is. And I do feel like it's so important to have to cultivate your relationship with you. And that was something that I had to really learn how to do because you and I started dating so early. Yeah. So I spent, you know, and before you, I had a boyfriend for a while, too. I was very what? much re <laughs> relationship person. <laughs> I'm, I've been a relationship gal. And so... <laughs> what, what did you just say? So relationship gal. So, like... You know, I had to because we started dating so young yeah. and then we got married young too. you know, just v just via the nature of it all. It's very codependent. It's like, oh, we're a unit. Yeah. And one day you you will wake up and go, oh, we're not. Yeah. Like I'm still my own person and you're your own person and we want different things or we're hurting each other or, you know, whatever. Like you wake up and you go, oh, no, that's and it's and the, the, the beauty of it is that you should be your own person. You need to be your own person. Yeah. Your own person is 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 beautiful and unique and so special. And yeah. and when you when I woke up one day and I felt like, oh, man, I'm putting even if Evan's being an amazing partner right now, I am putting every expectation on him, like yeah. needing him to be everything to me. And even if he is quote unquote doing it all right, it still doesn't fulfill me entirely because I need to fulfill myself, yeah. you know? And I think that's why we've talked about a lot in different call homes where we're always like, go out and like pursue your, your mm -hmm. dreams, pursue your hobbies, pursue friendships. Like, have things outside of that relationship. Yeah. And then also do that alone with yourself too. Like figure out what you love to do with you. Do you love to go take a book and go on a walk and find a nice bench and read alone? Like, do you not like to take a nice walk? I like to take a walk and feel the breeze against my face. That yeah. makes me feel like me. I like to drive in the car and be blasting show tunes that I enjoy that time with me. Yeah. And it's important to keep cultivating that. Yeah. Um, and so that when you do have those times in the relationship and you're feeling a certain way, you can gauge about communication with your partner and gauge that, but then you're also can gauge, okay, have I neglected my relationship with me? Is it time to take care of me a little bit mm -hmm. and have the me moments and, and, and do some growing and, 
And maybe I'm in a season where I got to spend time with myself. And yeah. instead of looking at it as like a way of like feeling just utterly alone, it's a way of feeling like, oh, how can I like romance myself again? How can mm. I take care of myself again? Um, yeah. Also, mm -hmm. recognizing the difference between loneliness in your relationship and general loneliness. Mm -hmm. Right, because there, cause there could be this thing of like you, you and your partner are doing good, yeah. But you feel like you're in a season where you don't have too many friends, and that's bothering you, yeah. So then you're feeling lonely, mm -hmm. but you're kind of putting it all on the relationship to save you from that feeling. Yeah. Do you want to talk? You've you felt that way. I have felt that way at times, because, like, if I'm being super honest, there was kind of a friend cleansing I don't want to say like in a bad way just more in a way of like I realized I, I like I realized there was a there was a like a chunk of my life where I had like a large network of people that I yeah, hung you out had with a big crew of friends big crew but kind of like over time realized that like the depth wasn't as deep as I thought and kind of realized that that those relationships were based off of just like having fun mm -hmm. but there actually wasn't a whole lot of like depth there yeah. And so when you kind of like get older and you kind of go, well, you know, I'm not just about having fun anymore. Like there's, I need more. You kind of realize that whittles it way down. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a, it can kind of feel like a death a little bit. Like of where course. you're like, whoa, like I went from having a lot of stimulation, mm -hmm. a lot to, you know, kind of a concentrated thing. So you're getting more nutrients but it's also just less stimuli. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of this like, it's almost like weaning yourself off of an iPhone or something. You know what I mean? There's like this, okay, like I'm getting good stuff. I'm reading a book now, but it's not quite as exciting as the Dune 2. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. It's a little like, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, you need both. But um, like that's kind of been an interesting thing for me is like focusing yeah. on the quality of the relationship has definitely dwindled down the like yeah. size of the network. But then us processing too, like when you were, you were working through like that, that those feelings of grief is that at first it was like, is it something with our relationship and having to navigate? You're like, oh no, it has nothing to do with us. Well, it's yeah, a different I can, loneliness. I'm I can feeling. bring that into our relationship. Yeah. yeah. You know, cause then I can start to put on you the kind of things that I'm lacking. Why am I not the bro dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm why saying? Am yeah. Why am I not the bro? <laughs> I'm just like, dude, you don't get me anymore, babe. Dude, babe. <laughs> dude, babe. Um, <laughs> dude, babe. I walk in and I'm just like, what's up? Yeah. Boom, and then like, Let's make love. <laughs> Fist bump, chest bump. Let's do it. Yeah. Dude, babe, bro, let's make love. Be everything for me. Um, uh, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. it's like, because then you can start bringing that into the relationship. But that's unfair to your partner. Mm -hmm. So it's like your own loneliness with your life. If you put on your partner to somehow fix, which they obviously can't. Yeah. Um, You have to, you have to like. So all in all with this question, you have to kind of decipher, am I lonely in the relationship? I think a clear way to know that is if you if you and your friends are doing good and you're still lonely in your relationship. Mm -hmm. That's like kind of an, another litmus test to be like, oh, me and my friends have a great relationship. We have good times. I don't feel lonely at all in my social circles. But when I get home, I feel lonely. Mm -hmm. That's a really good way to know my relationship is lonely because you don't you can get a little combining where you're like, wait, I'm feeling a little lonely in my social circle. I'm feeling lonely in my relationship. Like you kind of start to, you things can start to blend yeah. there. So just be vigilant about like checking that out and be yeah. like, am I truly lonely my life? or is it my yeah. own life? You know, whatever. It's important to take note, I think, more than we do. I need, uh, that's something that I'm learning and haven't been very good at in a lot of parts of my life that I feel like I'm, I'm trying to focus on more is like, is like slowing down and pausing and yeah. like taking note of like, let's evaluate different aspects of who I am in my life right now yeah. so that it doesn't all combine in one emotion for me that I can go, I'm feeling this way in this area, this way in this area. And, you know, yeah. and evaluating there and not making it just one big porridge. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Emotional porridge. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's some sort of, 
That's got to be some sort of clothing line. Emotional porridge. Emotional That's porridge. Like a state of mind. Emotional <laughs> porridge like is sick. Emotional porridge definitely would be a, a badass clothing line. Like a hipster clothing line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You featured at Urban Outfitters. Emotional yeah, porridge. Emotional porridge. Their jeans are incredible. <laughs> this is Tumblr blog title. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. It's definitely like a Tumblr blog. <laughs> yeah. Emotional porridge. Okay. Don't steal that. I'm going to use that somehow. One of the many ideas we have that we never use that we, we promise we will. <laughs> this one will. This we'll, is the this one. one we'll do. Um, so, yeah. What you been up to? I've been running a blog called Emotional Porridge. <laughs> What's it about? I don't know yet. I just have the name. <laughs> it's just sick. <laughs> We're still stirring it up. Oh, oh, Lee, you always got the puns. That's why he's here. You always got the puns. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think, I hope that that answers it yeah. helps. Um, all right. There is another big topic okay. that we got quite a few voicemails about and messages about. Okay. And, uh, let's dive into the concept of it with a voicemail. Okay. Hi, mom and dad. Um, I'm calling because I want some advice on how to support my girlfriend, um, and navigate religion in our relationship. Um, so we live in New York City. We've been dating for a year. Um, I am from Boston, and I grew up Catholic, um, but not in a very intense way. And she is from Orange County and grew up evangelical. Um, so culturally, it's very different. Um, and... I think she's kind of going through reevaluating what all that means to her. And I want to be supportive while she does that. And, um, you know, not be overly involved um, or overly invested in an outcome and just give her the freedom to kind of figure out what she wants on her own. Um, but I have a lot of, you know, like negative associations and fears um, attached to it. Um, and so it's, it's kind of hard to be neutral. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, just navigating, dealing with her family, a lot of, a lot of her family like are accepting, but um, her mom and dad specifically, um, are not they're very loving but they you know they think she's going to hell um so and they don't they don't want to meet me yet um so yeah I guess just navigating all of it as someone that has no real familiarity with that culture um just any advice you all might have um considering I feel like you know more about the subject than I do um so thank you. I appreciate any advice you can give me. Um, I love a podcast. Thank you. First of all, I just want to say I... This is going to be the one that you're, I'm going to get the tears on mm. this conversation. Um, I want to say I am so sorry to you and your girlfriend that you're having to experience, like you said, parents that are loving to her but then will not accept you two together and um i'm just really sorry mm. talking about them you know thinking that she, she's gonna go to hell it is um a trauma that's so painful mm -hmm. when it comes to family and it's so wrong and i'm really really sorry that that's something that that you all are having to to deal with um, especially like when you're, you're a year in and, you know, loving on each other and just having that then hanging over. Mm. It's just, it's terrible. And I'm really sorry. Um, you also, I just want to say from just hearing this, you know, my initial reaction is you sound like such an amazing partner talking about how you're wanting your girlfriend to 
even though you have like the traumas and triggers mm-hmm. there, you're letting your girlfriend have this space yeah. to kind of figure out how she feels about everything. It is so hard when you come from um, a specific place where the religion was involved and it was actively hurting people and not accepting and loving people to be in a space where you're able to feel those triggers yourself and those traumas but then be there for your partner as they're walking through it is like such incredible love and I can only imagine how much that means to your partner um and if they don't feel it in this moment like they they will like they will feel that deeply Mm -hmm. um what are your initial thoughts about this honey oh it's tough you know I always look at it like it depends how close you are with your family you know it also depends now if your girlfriend is struggling with like her religion or ex-religion like I, I more details there mean a lot because it's like wait is she still like going like I think I still believe in the way of life or are we just talking about the fact that we feel like mom and dad aren't accepting and that sucks and we're trying to figure out how now I feel disowned by my own family energy like it would would it, would it like obviously there's a bit of both there but it'd be interesting to know like what you're dealing with when it comes to her attachment to the religion is, mm-hmm. is it basically oh I came out but I'm still a Christian and I'm trying to figure that out. Like there's yeah. kind of a lot yeah. going on there. So I don't know the details about that. But all I can say is to the piece of mom and dad not accepting you. That's just going to be it kind of feels like a death a little bit. Like I know I brought that up before, but it's like it's on them that they're not accepting you. So, yeah, I think it's going to feel like a death. I mean, I think the reality of my relationship with my parents isn't what I thought it was going to be. My relationship with my parents is not what I want it to be, yeah. but that's not on me. That's on them. Yeah. So I think there's this thing of like, that's probably where your support's going to come into is like, you know, obviously there's a religion piece, but just kind of going through the, hey, you know, I know this hurts. I know this mm-hmm. sucks. I know that the plan's not working out, you know, our childhood plan of our parents and us being best friends forever. Yeah. Supporting. But at the end of the day, like it's their belief system that's causing them to not support you. So you kind of have to go, that's the process. And like you said, you're, you don't come from that world. So it's foreign to you. This idea of like, wait, parents not love me. I'll, Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, no, no. I'll say this. You mentioned your girlfriend is evangelical from Orange County. And I'm like, hi, hello. Right. It's literally (laughs) evangelical from Orange County, both of us over here, um, how we were raised. And so what I'll say is um, as far as the family goes, and it literally like it makes me feel sick and like breaks my heart to have to say this. But I would say from just historically seeing this over and over again with my own friends and people that I love, um, you have to expect that her parents are not going to change. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I send every fiber of my hope that they will to you both. Um, but from what I've seen, unfortunately, there has to be an expectation that like they're, they're not going to change. Have hope. You know, give them love, but don't wait on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, and, and that's also kind then, of a thing. But then is also like, to can... like give them love if that's what you want. Like you have to oh, put up sure, your sure. own boundaries yeah. and, and understand like what's going to, you know, what's going to be too hurtful for you. And I think then that's the conversation. Like Evan said, you know, as far as supporting your partner, I think being a partner who um, can be encouraging to her when she's dealing with this from her family Mm -hmm. is incredible. But then for you to protect yourself in this and know as you're going through your relationship, as much as you love your partner, like genuinely processing if this, if this is someone who I want to be with long term, knowing like, how do you feel knowing that, you know, your future in-laws might never accept your relationship. Right. 
are you okay with that? And if you're not, like, it's okay that you're like, no, you know, yeah. you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? It's, it's, it's being able to, to process all those things. And like Evan said too, as far as your girlfriend, what she's feeling right now, um, about processing religion, unsure of what that is, mm -hmm. like Evan mentioned, is it her just working through the trauma of it? And we had another question, another voicemail um, that I'll just bring up um, where a caller called in and she said, I deal with so much shame uh, in my relationship now having come out of she was also an evangelical Christianity. And there's this concept of, quote unquote, original sin mm -hmm. and how she feels constantly this this feeling of shame um, because of the way that she was brought up. So yeah. uh, for your partner, is this something that your partner's feeling? Is she processing through like this constant feeling of shame? Um, or is it, I think I want to stay in this specific type of religion. Yeah. That's going to be different because like you said to our caller, you have all of your feelings about this and your yeah. traumas. And so it sounds, it, it feels impossible to say, but if there's a way that you can simultaneously let your partner process what you said you're doing, and I think that that's incredible, but also be taking care of yourself yeah, and, and still keeping your boundaries and being able to communicate that with your partner where it's like when there's a conversation, it might go too far for you. Like I know for myself personally, and this is like, you know, everyone no hate to anybody and everyone needs to move differently. But for me, from the background that I came from, um, if all of a sudden you, Evan, for example, started feeling like I want to really dive back into this specific religion um, and their, spe their specific ways of thinking, I don't think that's something that I could stay with because yeah. I know it would be very like triggering and unhealthy for me. Yeah. Um, and I also absolutely feel like there are parts of it that are, I am not okay with. Yeah. Um, so that's something that you then are going to have to be simultaneously examining in yourself. Um, so while you can take care of your partner by being there and letting her process simultaneously, make sure that it doesn't go to a place where you feel like you're feeling constantly triggered in in that space yeah like this isn't your journey here yeah this is hers mm -hmm. so be a supportive partner but don't take it upon yourself to figure this all out for her yeah this is going to be or else you're going to be never really moving on from it or like having elevated because it'll be kind of you fixing it all the time yeah. so just like let it go let her go through it be there to support but this is like you said, you don't even know really what this is. So you're kind of looking at this going, yeah, I don't even know what this is all about yeah. really. And it's like, yeah, I would imagine it kind of feels like alien almost, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so don't try to like totally get it. Just be there for her. Yeah. If she needs anything, be there. But like, and if she's going to have to go through this because they all, you know, that's, it's her journey. Yeah. And I was going to say, you know, if you're comfortable, like just being there and you're feeling like you're protecting yourself too and your traumas, um, just know that there's going to probably be a lot of moments where in her pain, it might get directed towards you, but not be meant to be directed towards you. Right. Like when you're raised your whole life being told that if you love a certain person, you're going to go to hell. There's so much, there's so much trauma in that that even if she fully doesn't believe that and is, you know, wildly in love with you and this is this is the perfect relationship for her, there still unfortunately is that process of like the just the shame that has been put on someone and then the pain of feeling your parents not accepting you for who you love. It's a lot and it's going to be something that just like we brought up earlier with like, you know, getting cheated on. It's grief. It's waves of grief that hit. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes, you know, Evan and I came from the exact same type of household. And even that, I feel like I often dump 
my traumas of that on you, Mm -hmm. even though we went through the same thing, because I'm feeling the pain of not feeling loved and accepted for who I am and being Mm -hmm. shut out for certain things that it's just so wrong. But then I'll direct my grief and trauma and frustration in in your direction, which, you know, I'm trying to learn to deal with through (laughs) therapy and all these things. But your 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 girlfriend may do that. So if this is the relationship you want to be in and you are comfortable walking through this with her, just know that in certain moments it might get directed towards you, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just the pain that she's processing, feeling all right. these things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, to some of our other messages about people saying that they have felt um, a lot of shame Um, because of their specific religious upbringing in relationships. Um, Do you have any suggestions for that? I I guess my question, what what was the question exactly? Like there were all different ones, but I'm just curious, like what kind of shame, like sexual shame, some of it was sexual shame. You know, a lot of it was seemed to be around that. The sexual shame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there's a couple things. I think that there's a lot of pressure put on sex. Right. So like the, there's not only like the self kind of hatred, right, of like don't touch yourself, don't have sex until you can. Mm-hmm. So it's like imagine. So your whole life you're told like you can't From masturbate. From purity cult- culture. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you can't masturbate. You can't have sex. Your whole life, your whole foundational upbringing is like do not look down there <laughs> sure. and do not let anyone else look down there and don't look at anyone else's <laughs> down there. Right. Yeah hardcore until one day you sign a contract with someone and then they're like it's all good baby you know what i mean so it's like uh, install the stripper pole in the bedroom right yeah Yeah. exactly so like all of a sudden you're just supposed to turn off 30 or however like 20 years of programming Mm -hmm. that you've had your entire life and just supposed to be like open and fun and ready to go Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i think and then also kind of like put pressure on to be like a sex icon. Yeah. Right. There's a lot of like pressure of like you got to blow your partner's mind so that they'll <laughs> never look anywhere else. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's a lot of like it's kind of like it's like playing go play basketball and you've and go dunk and you've never bounced a ball in your life. Yeah. There's sure. a lot of that in yeah. in like sex Christian culture. Yeah. Which when you look at it that and way, like, like, and like how be like, Can't wild dunk. Is that? You know yeah, what I mean? And then course. be like in your head about it, and it's like. And I love when you put it in the basketball. It's like yeah, of course you're gonna be filled with wild anxiety yeah because you're like i'm supposed to do what like i'm supposed, I mean, I'm supposed to play one-on-one i've never even seen a basketball court yeah, yeah so uh basically all i would say is like it comes from self-love first mm-hmm. so like if you're feeling sexual shame or shame from religion it's a lot of you've been you've been told to hate yourself in some form or another so it's getting back to like the, oh, I maybe am good enough or maybe I am pretty cool or maybe I am pretty interesting or yeah. a lovely if person. You, you know if you mean? come it's from, like, let's just say, like, again, this is specific to us, but like if you come from um, the specific type of evangelical religion we came from, yeah. it was like what was very much put into our heads since we were small children was you're a sinner and that's it. You're not, you're inherently not good. Yeah. And so then of course you're going to be <laughs> dealing with like the constant feeling of like I'm just I guess I'm just not a bad person yeah. so of course there's going to be shame so self love is so important and there's this and there's also and if you grew up in this you definitely know what this is which is everyone's full of shit in that like there's like don't talk about sex don't look at sex it's wrong it's wrong it's wrong and then when everyone gets married everyone fake brags about how epic they are at sex too so yes. there's always just like oh yeah. my god my night with my husband was insane yeah. and then you feel horrible I, I was, about I was to pound yeah. town and I was flying from the ceilings doing acrobatic work while mid orgasm yeah. how was your wedding night you know, like there's a lot of that shit too where it's yes. like no one's no one goes sex was horrific yeah, it took us a long time to figure. out A lot out of how people aren't it. honest when it's like, yeah, the wedding night when it's you're, the, a lot of these like people, it's their very first time ever. Yeah. It doesn't happen, or it's uncomfortable, or people haven't communicated. Right, and of course that it's that way. <laughs> yeah, and, right. but it comes from then you know again, my husband's a rock star in the bedroom, <laughs> and you're like, okay, like. <laughs> but it's the same energy of like you know the the stereotypical the specific again this is specific but the specific type of evangelical pastor where it's just like everybody get a look at my hot sexy wife I will yeah. never be attracted to another woman again for the rest of my life and you're like okay meanwhile headline pastor has 57 affairs you know what i mean it's like <laughs> either way long story short is like 
just know that whatever like the sexual shame you're going through probably most likely has just to do with the fact that like you've been you can't just wake up one day and be like shame free when you've been trained to be shamed your whole life so it's like just know it's a process go slow you know if, if you're kind of let's say you're new to sex and you're struggling with the shame thing like don't jump into the deep end and be like why do i feel weird like yeah. it's okay to just take your time I think a lot move slow move into like loving yourself as you go and then as you go evolve 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 you know I think a, a great way of doing this is um you know a lot of self-pleasure before sure learning your own body learning your own body what you like what feels nice what you feel comfortable with yeah. and if that if even that is feeling like it's too intimidating yeah. which I totally get um you know there's the element of like uh, what makes you f start feeling that feeling mm -hmm. there and mm -hmm. just allowing yourself to feel that and start there and get to that feeling and then maybe you, you don't feel comfortable touching yourself yet, but you can feel that feeling and then maybe in a couple days try it again. See if now maybe you want to start. And you, yeah, like you said, it's like you, 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 you let yourself ease into it so that you can start a sexual relationship with yourself and or then other people where you know what you want, you know what your boundaries are, what you are comfortable with mm -hmm. and learn that yourself. Mm. Um, and as far as in like the shame where you don't have the self love, um, you know, when we throw the term around self love, that's, it's like, how do you just get self love? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, can I just pay for self love? That right. would be great. <laughs> that would really help. N no, it's going to be a journey. Yeah. And it starts with, Getting to a point where it's almost kind of going back to like I was saying, having a relationship with you, like getting to know who you are mm -hmm. and letting yourself and, and, and letting yourself celebrate yourself, like spending time with you and just the affirmation of like, yeah, you are pretty amazing. And let yourself sit in that. Let yourself sit in that. You know, also trying to find different books and podcasts. I know for myself personally, I'll say this. I've said this before. Pete Holmes, You Made It Weird, were the most incredible podcast. You saw me. You saw my shift yeah. when I started listening to those. Um, I still love his podcast. But the He's early... amazing with the whole religion kind of... Yes. The trauma. trauma thing. And, and he... But he started... Those early podcasts. Those early ones. The the podcasts with with uh, Pete Holmes, with Rob Bell. We've had Rob Bell and Chatty Broads before. Yeah. You know, you all saw me. I was absolutely... Like 10 years ago. Out. Yes. But yeah. the Pete Holmes, Rob Bell. Pete Holmes with Richard Rohr. There's so many conversations that you can listen to. Um, and it helps you feel in community too, like knowing mm -hmm. it's not just you who feels this way and yeah. is struggling with figuring out how to feel what self love yeah. is. Um, but yeah, I think, I think even then too, just going back to our, our caller, um, and her girlfriend, just echoing then what we've all said is I think a way if you're in a relationship with someone who has, come from that specific type of religious background or a religious background that is not accepting or not affirming um a big way that you can love on your partner is patience yeah and i know it's so it, and that takes a lot of love and it, it, it is tough but like we we are going to need patience mm -hmm. i know i needed a lot of patience you needed a lot of patience we still do because we're healing that part of ourselves also like extra tough i don't know your scenario but it would be really really hard to if one person is experiencing a lot of shame and one person isn't sure so if one person feels super liberated in the bedroom mm -hmm. and free and the other person's kind of like super shamed up mm -hmm. that's a, that's like a gnarly place to be yeah because 100%. you're feeling like you're holding them up and you're holding the progress up and so yeah, you, you, let, you put that shame on yourself you you're like oh my go. partner is free and now i'm so holding now you're them back. faking it to like get through it because yeah. you're like trying to act like the thing that they want or you know and then, and then you're kind of burying yourself deeper yeah. into the shame hole so so possibly just communicating with your partner like maybe knowing that they might be feeling shame in that space and struggling with that even though they adore you you just be you, super real be like yeah. that position i get in my head about I mean, yeah. it could be that honest, like. No, but I'm saying even being the partner then to that person too. Like, if you're the partner who's super liberated, yeah, to just like know, okay, they this doesn't have to do with how they feel about me. Yeah. They might be feeling shame. That then you can maybe do a really sure. extra special job of communicating 
what they feel comfortable with or being like seeing that, hey, they seem comfortable with this specific thing. Mm -hmm. So let's be like, I really enjoy that, too. And let's vamp on that for a while, you know? Yeah, 100 percent. But yeah, you you like it could just be like like in a real practical way. It could be like, let's say that you're ashamed about the fact like of getting a little too freaky. Yeah. And it like freaks you out to get freaky. Mm-hmm. So then you're like, that position's a freaky one for me. I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. My partner seems to be like oh, loving it mm-hmm. or totally good. So you can either do one of two things. You can kind of fake it and just play the role that you're feeling like you should or you can just talk to them i'm not quite there yet can we try this other thing kind of warm up through it and get there if that's what we want to do what i mean it could be it could be as just cut and dry as that you know so i know that sometimes can take out the like mystery of the whole thing but then i think it'll allow you to get back into the mystery really well because you're going to be like i I, now we know each other better so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I hope that that helps in some yeah. way. The religion Obviously, we one, don't know the specifics, so we're kind of, you know, we're always kind of feeling it out. But Yeah. And I'm looking at the time for Evan, and I know you you have a, you got to <laughs> run to work soon. But I'll say the religion one, we did get numerous messages yeah. about that. Um, specifics, like um, one, I would love to maybe in a future call home, talk about this one. One with uh, two people who grew up super conservative, and now one person is regularly smoking weed and the other oh, person isn't yeah. against it but it's like oh i'm not used to well this. weed's a and- sin and so I, I think that's a cut and dry one <laughs> done next but, <laughs> i know there are a lot of like when it yeah. comes to the religion and relationships there were a lot so let us know if you want us to to keep talking about that um it's definitely a hard one to to try to cover in like a few minutes because obviously you know we have a lot of our own personal yeah. feelings with it but i'll wrap by saying you know We've been working through and on that for a few years now. Mm. And what I've come to realize is just, again, and it all kind of comes back to this, how important it is to have a relationship with yourself. I've had to really learn how to identify the certain triggers that I have because of my upbringing. When I meet someone who has a, a really beautiful relationship with religion, who is in uh, part of a a community, a church that's super affirming and loving. And it's amazing. But I have my triggers too where I go, hmm? Mm, Hmm." mm. You know, where I have to be like, okay, I need to learn how to, like like, like the acceptance of of different people's um, thoughts and beliefs. And if they're not, you know, hurting anyone. But yeah, I'm I'm processing through those, those traumas and triggers myself. And it's so necessary to have that relationship with yourself and spend a lot of time with you which Mm. means you talking about you either with a therapist or writing in your journal you talking to yourself doing a lot of reading researching that communities for yourself um it's so important to have that relationship specifically in a relationship so you don't get lost in that relationship Mm -hmm. you know so yeah i agree Anywho, we love you, family. Thank you so y'all. much for, for sending all of these. I, I love these family times. Me too. I And like I said, after getting all the messages last week, it just made me feel way less alone and, yeah. and encouraged me and, and love the feeling of community. So we yeah. adore you, family. And we love you. We love you and have a beautiful week. And we'll see you next week for the beginning of Traders 2 and The Circle. It's reality TV time, baby. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Love y'all. Love you. Mwah. Bye. Bye.